Welcome back students. In this video lecture we will be discussing why barcoding or what are the applications of barcoding. So first and the foremost application of the barcoding is that it worked with fragments. It worked with fragment in the sense that even if, if we get a small part of the specimen we are able to identify which species is that specimen and uh, uh, even if from the processed food stuff we are able to detect the species from that so that's a major application one of the major application of barcoding and the second uh, major application is that it works for all stages of life that is we can we are able to identify a species from any of this form you can see here the metamorphosis of a butterfly in any of the stages we can identify this particular butterfly this is a short tail butterfly uh, if we get this egg or this larvae or this later insta larvae or this pupal stage or the adult stage in any form of life we are able to identify the, that particular species to which it belong then the third important application is that it unmask look alike in the sense that the barcoding we are able to identify the or unmask the certain species which we earlier believed that it is that particular species and now it is not that uh, species we are able to clearly distinguish the species uh, we can distinguish among the species that look alike there are the different uh, uh, butterflies which look alike for example the common mormon uh, is there then there is a, a little bit similarity with the female species of uh, another butterfly uh, similarly uh, there are the white color butterfly uh, there is a different type of white color butterfly that is a psyche type then there is a grassello type uh, we can it's very difficult to identify between the uh, species and those species which look the adult which look similar can be uh, distinguished then uh, we are able to identify the dangerous organism uh, and we are able to identify uh, the different uh, organisms uh, such as uh, the earthworms which all the earthworms looks alike for us uh, so these all uh, organisms we are able to distinguish but a little bit expensive uh, still if there is any dispute in the identity of a particular species we are able to do the DNA barcoding and we are able to identify or we are able to reveal the identity of that particular species of in dispute then uh, we can fourth important point is that we can reduce ambiguity that is we are uh, in the sense that we are it is very easy to uh, identify or we are able to identify and also we are able to uh, solve the dispute and ambiguity or the confusion we are able to resolve the confusion between the species identification or in other words we can say that a barcode of life provide a digital identity uh, or a digital identity in terms of uh, ATGC pairs and supplementing that uh, more analog gradation of words shapes and colors that means uh, we can represent the organism in terms of these colors you can see the color code for honeybee color code for American robin so these are the uh, different uh, colors which represents the nuclear tides there is a C for uh, the blue for C uh, then uh, green for adenosine then red for thymine for black for guanine okay so these are the base pairs and these uh, nucleotide sequences will be having a particular color and each organisms will be having this type of 
color barcoding and uh, this color type barcoding which reduces the ambiguity or reduces the confusion in identification of organism and the fifth application is that the expertise to go further that is uh, currently about uh, um, or uh, more than 2 million species of various plants and animals have been identified by based on this morphological identification and uh, morphol taxonomist uh, who used to identify this morphology based upon the morphology of organisms is very less and yet there are the uh, more millions of organisms to be identified and number of taxonomists are reducing the modern techniques like dna barcoding has reduced the uh, labor or uh, reduced the effort paid by the taxonomists to identify the plants and animals by the simple procedure a uh, uh, little bit technically little bit uh, more but still we are able to identify without much effort so that's uh, uh, about the expertise to go further so with le less uh, expertise in taxonomic identification uh, the uh, individuals or scientists are able to identify the organisms by the simple by taking a single fragment of uh, or a small part of plants or animals we are able to identify to which taxa it belongs so that uh, it is an expertise uh, method for identification of individuals whether it is a plant or animal next sixth one it is it democratize the access since um, democratize in the sense that uh, there is a standardized library uh, storage of these barcodes and the identified species and their barcode have been recorded and kept in the database and uh, this database includes rare native and the invasive or endangered species which is locally and globally so there is a globally and the local database is available which can be assessed by all the individuals or the experts working under this field they are able to assess and there are even many sites available or many database available which is freely accessible to uh, common people also so it has it has uh, democratized the identification of plants and animals is uh, democratized so nowadays uh, there are the many individuals who take this identification process as an hobby and they you usually roam about to various places in the western ghats or to the himalayas and all there and they come up with uh, identification of new species sometimes of plants or animals you might have seen in papers next the seventh one is that it opens the way for the electronic hand health field guide and a life barcode so uh, it's very easy so we are there are the electronic devices in which uh, we are able to access these uh, barcodes and we are able to easily compare uh, these barcodes uh, with the data as available in the database and uh, purely an electronic it has become like an uh, electronic device like that as if we test uh, the glucose level by taking a pinch of blood from our uh finger so similarly by taking the uh, symbols taken uh, placing the small sample of the specimen in that device we are able to identify that particular species so uh, uh, scientists have come up to that level so uh, rather than going for a uh, an elaborated field study and by taking an elaborate field guide uh, the, the uh, we are using uh, in the sense that if you are using the taxonomic keys there will be the thousands and thousands of pages isn't it so we are not uh, recommend to take such type of heavy books or papers along with us uh, this small device is in enough by which we are able to identify the species and the eighth one it, it sprouts the new leaves on the trees of life so we'll be discussing this tree of life in the coming video lecture so since uh, from the period of darwin uh, period biologists are seeking a natural system of classification and in your uh, smaller classes you might have studied the 
different classification and uh, uh, this classification have drawn the geolo genealogical trees to the present day evolutionary history so the next it demonstrate the value of collection Compiling the library of barcode begins with the multi-millions of specimens in the museum, herbaria, zoos, and gardens, and many other biological uh, systems. The spotlight that the barcoding shines on these institutions and their collections will strengthen the ongoing efforts, efforts uh, to preserve the Earth's biodiversity. So uh, this barcoding technology will actually add to this conservation techniques. So we are able to document uh, the various organisms and we are able to prepare a database and we are able to uh, update the database which will be there for long uh, use and is also actually help in speeding the writing of the life of encyclopedia. So recently the updates have been updated from any part of the world and we are just uh, speeding up the life of this encyclopedia so these are the applications of dna barcoding and now let's discuss in brief how this barcoding is done actually this barcoding techniques have consist of the two basic steps the first step is that uh, to build a barcode library of the identified specimen so you, here you can see that these are the preserved specimens you can just collect the samples uh, and you can just uh, take the DNA samples from this identified specimens and you can just undergo the lab process and a barcode can be prepared. Second step, it is a sequence uh, alignment. That is, it involves the matching of the barcode which is present in the library for its identification. So the first step involves the selection of one or the more individuals per species as a reference samples yeah, in the barcode library, the tissues are collected uh, from the live specimens in the field or from the specimens from the museum also you can just collect it and these specimens are gone through the lab process and such, uh, such as a tissue sampling is done and the DNA is processed and the DNA sequencing is done to generate the DNA barcode in the form of this chromatogram. So here you can see a chromatogram and this chromatogram it is a visual representation of the DNA sequence produced by a sequencer and this barcode can be stored in the database for the future use or can be used as a query sequence to be compared with the sequence already present in the database. So this is a simple uh, explanation for how this DNA barcoding is done. This DNA barcoding projects have mainly the four major components such as this specimen which is the first component then the second it is a laboratory analysis then the third it is a databases then fourth it is a data analysis. So these are the four components of a DNA project. Now let's see one by one. Specimens can be collected from the Natural History Museum, Herbaria, Zoos, Aquaria, the frozen tissue collection from the seed bank, the type cult culture collections, uh, etc. You can just collect our live specimens itself. We can collect from the field work, etc. And the tissue is collected and the DNA and uh, these uh, tissues are uh, stored and temporarily stored and it is taken into the uh, for the second step that is a laboratory analysis. So inside the laboratory, you, the DNA is extracted by using the standard protocols. Uh, it is followed to obtain the DNA barcode sequence from the specimen. The DNA is amplified and the sequencing is done. The best acute molecular biology labs can produce a DNA barcode sequence within few hours. And the data can be placed in the database for the subsequent analysis. And uh, the third uh, step, it is a database. Perhaps the most important component of the DNA barcoding project uh, is the construction of a public reference library of a species identifiers, which would be used to assign the unknown specimens to the known specimens. And currently, there are two main uh, barcode databases. They are the International Nucleotide Sequence Database collaborative 
and uh, the barcode of life.